Photos from the 1970s have a certain vibe that you can't ignore. Each of these photos has a little secret something that you'll miss if you don't look closely. What looks like a simple photo of Linda Carter actually has much more than meets the eye. Linda Carter, known for her role as Wonder Woman, explained that the character was for women, not against men, and stood for fair play and fair pay. Susan Sarandon has always been a kind of journeyman actor, playing romantic leads, frightening heavies, and women on the verge of a breakdown. She credits some of the intensity she displayed in the film, Pretty Baby, on her surroundings at the time, a haunted house in New Orleans. Madonna grew up in a large family and often took care of her siblings while her parents were at work, which she resented. Tanya Roberts explained why she chose to appear in the fantasy film, The Beastmaster, during an interview with Fangoria, stating that it gave her the chance to be seen in movies without being the main focus. Charles Bronson and Jill Ireland were a groovy couple, both on and off screen, staying together from 1968 until Ireland's passing in 1990. Even after her death, Bronson kept her remains in a cane and was buried with it in 2003. When Charlie's Angels premiered in 1976, no one realized it would become a cultural touchstone. The first trio, Farrah Fawcett, Jacqueline Smith and Kate Jackson, were overnight stars and remained close friends even through cast changes. Smith explained in a documentary that the bond of the girls drove the series, both on and off set. Christy Brinkley, the iconic supermodel, made waves in the modeling world during the 70s, 80s, and 90s, attributing her success to her curvy and fresh-faced surfer girl look. Margaret was a versatile talent, moving from singing to motorcycle riding to acting alongside Elvis, before gaining critical acclaim in the 1970s. Did you watch the Battle of the Network Stars? It was a big hit, and people loved watching Wonder Woman in action. Her team, which included Farrah Fawcett, Penny Marshall, and Ron Howard, completely dominated the games. Raquel Welch appeared on Dick Cabot's show in 1972 to promote her film Myra Breckenridge and to meet Janis Joplin, whom she admired. Jacqueline Bissett takes her work seriously and when she's on set, she treats her job like it is the most important thing in the world. In the 1970s, Bridget Bardot retired from the film industry and moved to St. Tropez to establish the Foundation for the Protection of Distressed Animals. Hefner had a pretty amazing time in the 70s, running his magazine, hosting Saturday Night Live, and traveling with a group of bunnies. He even lived, worked, and partied at a gothic Tudor revival-style property until his passing in 2017.
Cheryl Teagues became a superstardom almost overnight after being featured in a layout in Seventeen magazine. Today's it's all different, from there on out she went on to become one of the most desired cover models of this groovy era. This beauty's career was cut short before she could truly shine in the groovy era. Born in Dallas in 1943, Tate was an army brat who moved from Texas to Washington and even Verona, Italy. She took the pageant world by storm and it's obvious why. After marrying Roman Polanski, she and her husband hung out with actors as varied as Peter Sellers, Yul Brynner, and Warren Beatty. According to friends Tate and Polanski were head over heels in love, it's a shame she didn't survive to experience more groovy time. Raquel Welch had a diverse career, appearing in mythological roles, tempting Ringo Starr, and starring in the revenge western classic Hanny Calder. In the film, she seeks revenge in the Old West, working with a bounty hunter to learn how to shoot and ride before going on her mission. The film is a must-see for western fans and revenge film enthusiasts. Morgan Fairchild got into acting because she didn't want to do her schoolwork, and her mother made her take drama classes to bring her out of her shyness. Dawn Wells, known for her role as Mary and in Gilligan's Island, appeared in iconic genre films in the 1970s such as The Town That Dreaded Sundown and Return to Boggy Creek. Wells also returned to the island in rescue from Gilligan's Island. Wells mentioned that Gilligan's Island would not be as wholesome if it were made today. Farrah Fawcett was 29 when she starred in Charlie's Angels, becoming a role model for young women. Her iconic hairstyle changed the way women wore their hair in the late 70s. Jamie Lee Curtis was a fresh face in the late 1970s, appearing in Quincy, M.E., and Columbo in 77, and in 1978 she appeared in her breakout role John Carpenter's Halloween. Madonna's willingness to do anything for the camera was evident even in high school, as she starred in the student film Egg, lying on the hot sidewalk as an egg was cracked over her stomach, creating the illusion that the egg was cooking on her skin. Madeline Smith, known for her roles in Live and Let Die and Taste the Blood of Dracula, reflects on her experience working with iconic actors and her preference for comedy over horror movies. Marin Jensen, who started as a model, transitioned to television in the 1970s, appearing on Battlestar Galactica and The Love Boat, while battling Epstein-Barr syndrome. Welch was known as a beauty icon for much of her career, but she didn't realize she was going to be marketed for her looks. Sally Field was a genuine star in the 1960s but she didn't feel like she was being taken seriously by the acting community. With roles in Gidget and the Flying Nun Fields was essentially seen as a goofy gal who wasn't ready for the big time. She proved everyone wrong in the 1970s. In the early 70s she studied with Lee Strasberg at the actor's studio and started trying to move past her girl next door image. In 1976 she starred the television film Sybil, about a woman dealing with multiple personality disorder. 
Field's portrayal was so affecting that she won a Best Dramatic Actress Emmy Award in 1977. From there on she was taken seriously. Linda Carter started in beauty pageants before her acting career took off, and even tried to break into the music industry before finding success in Hollywood. This Italian-Tunisian actress was known for her striking looks and was crowned the most beautiful Italian girl in Tunisia. After winning the crown, she received numerous film contracts and appeared in films like Eight and a Half and The Pink Panther in the 1960s, and in the 1970s she starred in a comedic duo with Bridget Bardot in the film The Legend of Frenchie King. Jane Seymour, a beauty icon in the 1970s, played the role of solitaire in Live and Let Die at just 20 years old. She and Roger Moore, who played James Bond, had a close relationship on and off set. This young pageant queen became a star in the 1970s after appearing in ads for Muriel Cigar and scoring hits on the country music charts. Suzanne Somers was a beloved actress in 1978, starring in Three's Company and earning a People's Choice Award for Favorite Female Performer. She was later fired from the show after asking for a raise, which led to her character being replaced. Jill St. John began her career as a child actor on the radio and signed a contract with Universal in 1958. In 1971, she became the first American to play a Bond girl in Diamonds Are Forever. She studied at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London for three years before Universal Pictures offered her a seven-year contract, that's not bad for a gal just out of school. Initially she appeared in shows like Emergency, Kojak, Adam, Twelve, Macmillan and Wife, Ironside, The Rockford Files, and The Law but she went on to star in a few cult classic films that people are still watching today. This Partridge family star started her career in the 1970s as Lori Partridge at the age of 17, but didn't love her role and grew apart from her co-star David Cassidy. Hailing from North Dakota, Angie Dickinson made her mark in the 1970s as the star of Police Woman, inspiring many young women to join the police force. Barbie Benton was a television mainstay in the 1970s with multiple appearances on Hee Haw, Fantasy Island, and The Love Boat. She was also married to Hugh Hefner and had three albums chart in the top 50 on the country charts. This theatrically trained, singing, dancing, and comedic bombshell was essentially shut out of Hollywood until Mel Brooks cast her in Silent Movie. After appearing in that film she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress and it was as if the floodgates opened and producers figured out where they could cast her. She went on to co-star in The Jerk and Heartbeeps while popping up on shows like Love American Style and The Muppet Show. Peters hasn't stopped working since the 1970s and she regularly appears on television and in concerts across America and Europe. Blondie was a part of a New York City scene made up of art kids, punks, and rockers looking for a good time. 
Deborah Harry was the coolest of them all, fronting this poppy group of punks and scoring hits while she knocked down barriers. Jessica Six from Logan's Run is also known for her British Academy of Film and Television Arts Award-winning role in Equus. A gutter explained that she never thought there was anything strange about appearing in science fiction and cultured art, saying, one of the things about acting that I love is that if you end up doing really low-budget stuff where you have no money, you appreciate how funny it is to have that much of a budget. This 70s folk rock goddess and her then-husband lived in a tiny shack with no bathroom door and tools hanging from the wall. Catherine Bach almost turned down the part of Daisy Duke on the Dukes of Hazard, but was convinced to try out by the show's creator. This English icon was a mainstay of the swinging 60s who appeared in some of the most fascinating arthouse films of the groovy era. One of her most interesting films was John Borman's Zardoz, a dystopian science fiction film starring Sean Connery star was released in 1974. Her chilly look and droll English voice has made her one of the rare female heavies in the cinema. At the time she was all over the cinema and living life as a wild child. She told Interview Magazine, I mean, we could park anywhere. I just dropped the car off anywhere, nobody hassled you. We did what we wanted, we were vaguely rebellious, but nobody really took much notice of us. Cher faced challenges in the 1970s due to public perception of her appearance and personal life but she persevered in her career. Cheryl Ladd initially turned down the offer to replace Farrah Fawcett on Charlie's Angels but ultimately changed her mind after Aaron Spelling persuaded her. Deidre Hall who has portrayed Dr. Marlena Evans since 1976, appeared on various television shows in the 1970s, including Kung Fu and Columbo. Jane Kennedy was the first woman sportscaster for the National Football League NFL, and was nervous about breaking into the world of sports, but she knew she could do the job and it would be a passion project for her. Jacqueline Smith, the only original actress to stick around on Charlie's Angels throughout the entire run of the series, is in rarefied air. Linda Ronstadt, after her time with the Stone Ponies, pursued a solo career as a singer, expressing that she always knew she was meant to sing. Lonnie Anderson played secretary Jennifer Marlowe on WKRP in Cincinnati and says the show was great because all the actors were close to one another, starting at the same level in 1978. Henna described working on Taxi as like being with her family, with the writers being open to suggestions and the cast being a lot of fun but she had to learn to anticipate Danny DeVito's comedic whims. She shared with The Hollywood Reporter that her negotiation scene with Louis in Shut It Down, Part 1, was her favorite, but she couldn't get through it without laughing because of DeVito's antics. Jerry Hall was a popular party girl icon in the 1970s, with photos of her enjoying the nightlife appearing in London and New York City. 
She eventually became a well-known model, citing the higher pay as a reason for focusing on modeling over acting. Lindsay Wagner played the bionic woman for three seasons in the 1970s and continued with the character in TV movies, despite the network's initial concerns. Olivia Newton-John's transformation into a pink lady at the end of Greece was one of the greatest moments of the 1970s. Her version of a pink lady is dressed completely in black, with a hot cha cha look that is Russ Meyer meets Broadway. This outfit was so popular with fans that it ended up selling at an auction in Beverly Hills for $405,700, more than double the expected price. According to John, the pants she was wearing in the scene were so tight that she had to be sewn into them before filming. Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac were the biggest stars on the planet in the 1970s, but their lives weren't as fun as their album, Rumors, might suggest. Goldie Hawn emphasized the importance of putting in the work to pursue a craft, rather than just having a dream. This English cult actress began her career as a model and appeared in genre films before making her mark in the 1970s. Despite her well-known scene in The Spy Who Loved Me, it was actually a stuntman in a wig who flew the helicopter. Jacqueline Bissett was known for her iconic appearance in the 1970s, particularly in the movie, The Deep, where she emerged from the water in a t-shirt. During her peak fame, Raquel Welch was constantly photographed in her iconic role as a saucy nun in Bluebeard added to her celebrity status. Despite having a broken arm from filming Kansas City Bomber, her outfit covered it up and she noted that the producers didn't really care. Jane Seymour has heterochromia, which means she has two different colored eyes, making her all the more mystifying in a prominent figure in the 1970s. Stevie Nicks went through a series of relationships with members of her group and a couple of guys from the Eagles, 